Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hi guys, okay. I am back from uh, camping and hiking in Maine. It was fun. And I'm ready to learn. Original link to the video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord. Click on it, send you right over there. Would love to have you. My name's Connor. I forget if I said it or not. Let's do it. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. Home X is down the hall. Phone's away. Napoleon. Throw it. Okay, let's go. Uh, my, 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 uh, my coffee. After the gigantic battle at Cape Ignomis, the Romans were now free to land on African soil. And so, they did. <laughs> After the gigantic battle at Cape Ignomis, the Romans were now free to land on African soil. And so, they did. The Carthaginians chose to focus on defending the city of Carthage itself. So the Romans immediately took the city of Aspis and were then free to raid and plunder the countryside. They took over 20,000 slaves and a ton of booty. But then, some orders arrived from the Senate. This whips, sorry. Send home the booty. Oh, but I want to stay. No, Steve, not you. They mean the treasure. Well, we are not watching any more of this filth. <laughs> I bet you they do play. If I was a teacher, oh my God, I would never have to teach. I would just play YouTube videos. So the other console left with the booty. That'd be the easiest job. I would watch YouTube videos, record them, go to class. I'm, I would never be a teacher. I'd be too terrible. Watching any more of this filth. So the other console left with the booty, leaving Regulus and his forces on their own. And they began advancing towards Carthage. Along the way, according to the ancient writer Livy, they encountered a literal dragon. Now Livy was a Roman historian, so his account may be slightly exaggerated. No, it's definitely but true. This, I believe, as his account may be slightly exaggerated. It's also possibly a translation issue. Perhaps the Bagratus dragon was just a really big snake. Then again, maybe it never happened at all. A lot of ancient history is disputed like that. But hey, since you took the time to pause the video and read this, I just want to let you know you're a real swell, and I'm sorry I told you to shut up in part one. I didn't mean it. Oh, thank you. But this, I believe. As the Romans continued to plunder, the Carthaginian people flooded into the city. There's now, like a marsh here. Not only was it in a major panic, but it was so crowded, the people began to starve. Don't panic, everyone! Look, I know you're all starving, but I still have food for me. So, you know, it's not all bad. Whoa! You're wasting your tomatoes! I was just about to say. And you idiots wonder why you're starving? Oh well, it's just more food for me! Things weren't looking good for Carthage. They had to do something to stop the Romans rampaging throughout their land. So they decided, finally, it was time to put an end to it. They headed out and set up on rough hilly terrain overlooking the Roman camp, and they prepared for battle. Now, while the Carthaginians were the traditional masters of the sea, on land, they weren't always the brightest. Case in I say this all the time, but it shows you how much eyebrows are important to human emotion, like in, by just the fact that so many animations, I say this about history matters too, I say this all the time, it's getting old, I get it, but it's so crazy just how the eyebrows can convey things. In point, <laughs> setting up in this position overlooking the Roman camp was just about the stupidest thing they could have done. Why? Well, there's something you gotta understand about Carthage. Okay. The Carthaginian land forces actually suffered from a multitude of different issues. First of all, since the Carthaginians were rich, 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 they could afford to pay a nice. huge number of foreign mercenaries to fight for them. These mercenaries actually made up the vast majority of Carthage's forces, and therefore, Carthage's land armies were a melting pot of many different cultures. This, however, meant that if a battle wasn't going their way, there could be loyalty issues. 
Man, I ain't getting paid enough for this. You Balearic slingers better not be thinking of running away. What did he say? I don't know, man. I don't speak Phoenician. Let's get out of here. This is American politics in a nutshell. I'm so dumb. I can't. Ah, uh, never mind. Man, I ain't getting paid enough for this. I get in trouble every time. This? You Balearic slingers better not be thinking of running away. What did he say? I don't know, man. I don't speak Phoenician. Let's get out of here. That made no sense. Forget what I said. I was trying to be... I... Clearly, there were also language issues. The military generals tended to be Carthaginian, but they made a lot of strange decisions. For example, one of the most feared assets of the Carthaginian army elephants? were the war elephants. To a Roman soldier who had never even seen an elephant before, this was like fist fighting, a literal monster. Yet the Carthaginians continually kept placing the elephants in the rear, where they were no use. In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of Numidia provided Carthage with the most skilled cavalrymen in the world. But the Carthaginians often chose to fight on rough on- Wasn't a big problem with elephants that like, if they were spooked, then they would turn around and just rampage through your own ranks. And keep them, keeping them in the back, like they provide the intimidation factor without really putting them in harm's way. So I feel like that's not a completely bad idea. In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of Numidia provided Carthage with the most skilled cavalrymen in the world. But the Carthaginians really? often chose to fight on rough, uneven terrain, where horses and elephants were less effective. And so, in this case, when the Carthaginians again chose the rough terrain near the Roman camp, the Romans easily sent them packing. Wow, Regulus. We're mere miles from Carthage. You sure are amazing. Yes, Steve. I know. <sighs> Steve? What's the matter? We've almost won. It's not just his butt. Like, his face is so out of place. I just wish I could be as great as you, Regulus. Steve. You're amazing. I mean, look at this <laughs> thing. <laughs> his face is... <laughs> Oh, there's a thumbnail right there. Thumbnail. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I know. But I mean, like, at war stuff. I'm such a noob. My tanks always get blown up. I can't even fly an aircraft straight. I have amazing PSP for ads. I, an ad is coming. Uh, tanks? Aircraft? What are you talking about? I know what he's talking about. Guys, use the... Uh, uh, play WT War Thunder. Oversimplified WT. It helps out. Uh, it, we're watching Oversimplified. Let's use their codes if we decide to get things. That's Steve. I'm talking about free-to-play online multiplayer combat game and this video's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Don't just drive the tank. Become one with the tank. You can play as more than 2,000 battleships, aircraft, tanks, and helicopters in dynamic player versus player combat. With amazing 4K graphics, each vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components. And for history nerds like you and I, the vehicle collection in War Thunder spans over a hundred years of military Guys, my, uh, my from the 1920s spin. to the present day. I love the detailed damage mechanics in War Thunder. You ever think about how the exact angle a shell hits an armored vehicle affects the resulting damage? War Thunder has. Every bullet and shell is simulated with realistic destruction. That's the kind of thing that gets me up in the morning. And by using my link in the description below, new and existing users can get an exclusive oversimplified decal to make their T-50 tank look extra spicy. That's pretty cool. Plus, you'll get a huge bonus pack, including premium vehicles and boosters. So play War Thunder now on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And as always, by using my link, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Invading Africa, getting some booty, and sending the Carthaginians packing. Everything was looking up for Regulus. A Roman victory seemed like it was only a matter of time. But then, Regulus realized something. He had been consul for almost a year, and his term was coming to an end. 
He knew that if his successor took over and he finished the job, then he would get the naked statues, not Regulus. And there was no way Regulus was going to allow that. So he jumped the gun. You there, Carthaginian boy. I want you to deliver a message to your elders. Oh, I thought he was going to be like, you take over while I leave. I, Marcus Attilius Regulus, demand the total and unconditional surrender of Carthage. Unconditional surrender? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death first. Just deliver the message, you punk. He demands your total surrender. What? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death that's first. That's what he said. Hey, that's what I said. Yeah. Well, boys, this Roman thinks we're out. But we're not out, are we, boys? No. We'll do what we always do in times like this. Hire somebody else to solve our problems for us. Uh. Darren, bring in the Spartan. Regulus's overly harsh demands had had the unintended effect of reinvigorating Carthaginian resolve. They brought in a mercenary from the famed land of Sparta named Xanthippus to help dig them out of this situation. And we all know what Spartans are like. Xanthippus showed up and immediately took charge. He had a look around and said, You idiots, put the elephants in front of the army so they can smash into the Romans and stop fighting on rough, uneven terrain. Find a big flat field so your superior cavalry can do their job. And what's this I hear about you giving a speech telling everyone they're gonna die? Hey, I was just telling the people the truth. You're a politician. Don't do that. Lie to the people. Exactly. <laughs> And so Xanthippus led out the newly reformed Carthaginian army to meet Regulus in the Battle of the Bagradas River. The elephants, now in the front, smashed into the Roman lines, causing disarray. The cavalry, with total freedom of movement, outflanked the Roman infantry. Thanks to this impressive Spartan, the battle was a total Carthaginian victory. Well. And Xanthippus, for his stunning victory, was forced to flee Carthage because the leadership got jealous. Yeah, all right, whatever's coming to you, you, you deserve it. Regulus, the Roman consul, was captured during the battle. Legend has it, he was brought before the Carthaginian council, and they made a proposition. Well, Reggie, not looking so good anymore, is it? Looks like we beat you pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Up yours, you Punic pansies! Now, now, Regulus. Nobody loody. likes us or loser, do they? No. How about this? We're gonna send you back to Rome, and you convince the Roman Senate to surrender to us. If you fail, though, you gotta come back so we can torture you to death. Okay? Okay. You promise? I promise. Hey, guys. Whoa, Regulus! We thought you got captured. I did, but they sent me back to convince you to surrender. Well, should we? Surrender? No, never surrender. Give them hell, boys. They're at the end of their rope. Anyway, I gotta go be tortured to death now. <laughs> what? Yeah, part of a deal I made. Good man. Man of his word. Long story. Whoa, hey, wait. Regulus. No, no, it's cool, guys. I promised. Regulus. This is ancient times. We massacre entire populations. We chop pets in half. You can break Last straw. A promise. No, Tim. You never break a promise. That's too far. And so, Regulus went back to Carthage and was tortured to death. And for keeping his promise, he was immortalized as the leading symbol of Roman virtue. Meanwhile, after their defeat in Africa, the remaining Roman survivors, still in Africa, were still in Africa. And they what? needed to be rescued. So the Romans sent their fleet to pick him up. That had to have... No, oh, never mind. And bring him home. They successfully fended off a Carthaginian fleet, grabbed the survivors, and made their way to Sicily. A great success. But then, things took a turn for the worse. Uh, sir? That cloud looks kind of... Divine winds, kamikaze. Angry. Fear not, coward. If we Romans can build a war fleet from scratch and defeat the Carthaginian Empire at their own game, why, then even Mother Nature herself will crumble before us. I laugh in the face of Mother Nature. Ha <laughs> ha! See? 
Come on, guys. Laugh at Mother Nature with me. Lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> To the horse. 284 ships. Nearly 80 per- I was gonna ask- Oh. Are there hurricanes in the Mediterranean? Like, it, 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 is the weather pretty, uh... Because I, I'm pretty sure, like, two- Like, a cold front and a warm front meeting each other is what creates really bad weather. I'm no meteorologist, okay? But it feels like the southern coast of Europe isn't really cold enough to provide that front clash over the Mediterranean. But l let me know, if, like, what's the worst storms? Percent of the Roman fleet was 284 ships. Nearly 80% of the Roman fleet was destroyed. Spaghetti guy. As many as 100,000 men drowned Forget in what a terrifying from. act of nature. Never before had Rome lost so many men in a single incident. A hundred thousand casualties for any other nation would be crippling. Any other nation would hastily sue for peace. Any other nation would spend decades trying to recover. But Rome was not just any other nation. Infamous. It reminds me of Randy Marsh. I didn't hear no bell. For its unrelenting determination in the face of overwhelming odds, Rome said, well, I guess we'll just have to build another fleet. And they did. In just three months, they built 220 more ships. An astonishing feat. The Romans sent out their brand spanking new war fleet and... I was going to say, imagine it happens again. They got caught in another storm. This time, a whole nother fleet was lost. Holy or And smoke. still, the Romans did not give up. The Carthaginians couldn't believe it. Their enemy had just lost hey, hundreds there. of thousands of men, had two fleets almost entirely destroyed, and they still wouldn't surrender. Two are those hieroglyphs? Is that, are those dolphins? A horse? An anemic? Fleets almost entirely destroyed, and they still wouldn't surrender. As one Roman poet put it, the victor is not victorious if the vanquished does not consider himself so. In typical Roman fashion, after a short break, is they were the once again building another fleet. All right, However, just so I can sound smart, maybe they get hit by another one? For now, after all the disasters at sea, the focus began Never. shifting back to the land campaign in Sicily. The Carthaginians, overconfident from recent successes, attempted to retake Panormus, but the Romans countered the terrifying war elephants by throwing stuff at them and scaring them away. Yeah. Having stopped the Carthaginian advance, the road was now open to the final Carthaginian stronghold on the island, Lilibium. Lilibium was an extremely well-fortified city. In of course, this is the first Punic War. I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, Carthage is going to be destroyed, but Hannibal isn't even... 250 BC, the Romans laid siege. The Carthaginian defense, however, was fierce, and skilled blockade runners kept the city supplied. Progress was so slow that the siege would last another nine years. To make matters worse, the Carthaginians later sent possibly the greatest military general of the time, a man named Hamilcar Barca, to the island. He engaged in a My boy. skillful campaign of guerrilla warfare behind enemy lines, and for the remainder of the war, he was a major thorn in the Roman side. For now, with the deadlock siege at Lilibium and the new Roman fleet at sea, things seemed to be at a standstill, and the Romans had to do something to break the deadlock. Thankfully, the Roman consul, Clodius Pulch. So I'm no expert, obviously, on Rome or Carthage. I'm still learning this stuff. But from my experience of learning about, you know, Napoleon or Caesar or Alexander the Great or Hannibal, Hannibal really was enjoyable because he had, he was not, he, he was, he was, ruth, he could be very ruthless. Let me know if I'm wrong, okay? This is just from my experience of learning, okay? He could be very ruthless. He could be very understanding, and he always, he seemed to be doing both options 
in smart ways. Not like sometimes he was feeling ruthless. Sometimes he was feeling um, gracious or uh, uh, merciless, or no, merciless, merciful. Um, uh, but like he, he seemed to choose the, 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 one of the two based on what seemed to be a smart decision rather than like on his own emotion. I can't have he just seemed like a very all-around good general who, like, thought ab about... I, I explained that terribly. Uh, sure. Had an idea. He tried to get eh, things moving okay. by attacking the Carthaginian fleet at Trapana. Now, before a battle, to predict if they would win, it was common for the Romans to look for signs from the gods. This could mean observing the weather or inspecting some cow livers. You know. What did they say about the, the hurricanes? Typical religion stuff. Yeah. Good. In this case, Pulcher reportedly tried to feed some sacred chickens. But unfortunately for him, they wouldn't eat a crumb. A very bad sign. Well, he said, if they won't eat, then let them drink, stupid chickens! We'll observe the weather instead. Gods, give me a sign. Uh, ignore that. Okay, how about this? <laughs> I like this if guy. I I can get this piece of paper into that trash basket, we'll win. Okay, if I can stand here silently for five seconds and do nothing, we'll win. <laughs> Pulcher chose to ignore the signs from the gods, and in the following battle... I like that guy, so he doesn't believe in any of the religious stuff, he just sees it as a opportunity to make himself look... Um, in the right, but when it doesn't go his way, he just makes an excuse. Perfect. Just like me. The superior Carthaginians tore them to shreds. It also didn't help that by now the Romans they had removed actually. the Corvus to stabilize their ships. And without their secret weapon, it was a disaster. And Pulcher was disgraced. To make matters worse, hey. the victorious Carthaginian fleet then went on to intercept a Roman supply fleet on its way to Lilibium. As they approached, however, they saw the signs of an incoming storm, so they took shelter. The Romans, on the other hand, said, Onward, men! Set sail! We've got to deliver these supplies stat! You but, uh, sir, those clouds, don't you think we ought to have learned our lesson by now? Yes, twice. Brian, we ought to have. But, we haven't. Another fleet and 50,000 men lost in another storm. Disaster. What's going on? Now, at this point, there still really isn't a clear winner. Sure, the Romans have captured most of Sicily. What's the distance between Sicily and the northern African coast? Like 200 miles? Ish? At this point, there still really isn't a clear winner. Sure, the Romans have captured most of Sicily and cornered the Carthaginian land forces at Lilibium. But the mm -hmm. continued disasters at sea were critically depleting their resources. And without a strong fleet, Rome could not win. Meanwhile, Hamilcar Barca Eyebrows. was still knocking about and creating even more problems. When does so he become Hannibal? Where do we go from here? How does this war finally end? By now, the two sides had been fighting for 23 years. They were exhausted. Their money? Their resources, their strength, were all utterly spent. The Carthaginians in particular were eager to see the war end so they could get back to trading and making money. So after the latest Roman disaster at sea, they said, look, there ain't no way in heck the Romans can come back again. They can't possibly afford to build another fleet. They're done. That's it. Recall the navy, repurpose them as merchant ships, and let's get back to making some money! <laughs> Assuming the Romans would soon make peace, an anti-war faction within the government recalled a large portion of the navy, leaving Hamilcar on his own. The victors fine. appeared to be declaring themselves victorious. Meanwhile, the vanquished were getting ready for round five. The Romans built another fleet, this time heavily relying on patriotic donations from the upper classes to afford it. And once again, they put to sea. And once, <laughs> sir, the Romans have built another fleet. Oh, for goodness sake, Clarence, can't you see I'm busy rolling around in this pile of money? Get out of here. I don't care anymore, Clarence. I just don't. Care. The Carthaginian Clarence. politicians made a fairly lackluster final effort. That was with mean. Sorry, Clarence. That poorly built fleet to supply their forces made a fairly lackluster final effort with that poorly built fleet to supply their forces in Sicily. 
But when the brand new Roman fleet caught them at the Battle of the Agates, even without their signature Corvus, they dealt them the final blow. And that was that. 23 years of war. Neither side could afford to keep fighting, but the Romans showed that they intended to anyway. The Carthaginians had no choice but to throw in the towel. The war had been long and hard for both sides, but in the end, it was Roman determination that won the fight. The Romans had spent the entire war trying to find a way to deliver the knockout blow. They learned how to build a fleet and engage in naval combat to de Wolf boobs. deliver the knockout blow. They learned how to build a fleet and engage in naval combat. They developed ingenious new ways of waging war. They attempted an invasion of the Carthaginian heartland, learning. and whenever disasters struck them, they always came back again and again. The Carthaginians, on the other hand, spent the entire war watching whatever Rome did and then figuring out how to respond. They were much more passive, and so it's no wonder then that when both sides were close to collapse, Rome was the one who figured out how to go that little bit further. In 241 BC, the Carthaginian politician sent word to Hamilcar Barca that he was on his own and could choose to make peace with the Romans if he wished. Hamilcar was stunned. He felt betrayed by the politicians. Some sources say he refused to even negotiate. You don't need them. You're amazing. Negotiate. Nevertheless, terms had to be drawn up. Well, Hammy, I'm glad you Carthaginians have finally come to your senses and recognized who the true winner is. How many fleets did you lose? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, here are our <laughs> terms. You leave Sicily to us and return all of our prisoners. You're not allowed to make war against Syracuse or her allies, and you have to pay us 2,200 talents of silver over the next a 20 talent? years. What is a talent? talent of silver? Yeah. Well, to put it in perspective, in the year 2022, that'll be worth around, let's say, 40 million US dollars. Ay, caramba! That will cripple us! Wow, we got a real smart guy over here. Yeah, that's kind of the point, you dingus. Ugh. So that's inflated to 50 million. And Carthage, you'd think like a top, you know, economic country today, 50 million would definitely not cripple them. I guess I have no choice. I accept. Great. Oh, by the way, we changed our minds. You actually have to pay us 3,200 talents of silver over 10 years. Thanks oh. for accepting. Dude, see you later. H hey, you didn't let me say on cool. He didn't let me stay on cool. The treaty was extremely punishing, and by switching up the terms at the last minute, they enraged the Carthaginians. But still, one of the longest and deadliest wars at the time was finally over. The Romans had won. They achieved their aim of gaining Sicily, and even though it wasn't part of the peace deal, they took advantage of a weakened Carthage and grabbed Corsica and Sardinia as well. Roman expansion ah. beyond the... And that, that looks so much better now. Italian peninsula had just begun. The Romans hoped that now the Carthaginians would forever be under their thumb. Unfortunately, the harsh terms they placed on the Carthaginians at the end of the war left a growing anger. Hannibal's about to whoop your butt. That would come back to haunt them. Uh, until he doesn't. One day, Carthage will have its revenge. That's nice, dear. I'm serious, woman. Maybe not in my lifetime, but perhaps... <gasps> a bop it. Or a shop it, stop it. His, my beautiful son, Lala. you are born into a momentous destiny. Wait, that's not Hannibal? You shall be Rome's greatest enemy. You'll tear Rome limb from limb. You'll burn their pathetic city into the ground. You'll slaughter their people, men, women, and children. My child. This is not the pets. Oh, he farted. You are vengeance stop telling our baby he's vengeance but he is barbara he's vengeance that may be so wait so her name is barbara barbara someday but for now our son has a name and you should call him that instead his name is dang it i was wrong <laughs> he looked ah that's not my fault, okay? I, I haven't learned about this. I thought it was Hannibal. Second Punic War, let's go. I'm more familiar 
I am much more familiar with the Second Punic War. That's not saying much, but I am. Forget to play War Thunder now by clicking my link in the description below. I have to go Get to the a airport. Huge bonus pack including premium vehicles, boosters, and it's more. 206. I have to leave at 215. Users will also get the very sexy oversimplified decal, so you can destroy your enemies in style. So cool. So awesome. All right, um, I have to go, guys. I have to leave in eight minutes, and maybe I can upload this by then. Um, I hope we're all doing well. It is 2.07 p.m. on September 8th, 2022, and I hope you're all having a good day or doing well. If not, trust me. Look at me. If you're not doing well, emotions are fickle, my friend. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Love you all. See you guys next time. Bye.